Yes, yes. So now we're getting started. You know, I'm gonna start this off like education is elevation. And today we're gonna be exploring, debating the critique. Um, my name is George Lee, AKA Conscious Lee. Don't forget the Lee. You can find me at georgeleespeaks.com for all information, including booking and merchandise. Uh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta put that shameless plug in there. Uh, I'm gonna start this off though by uh, going going into I feel like the the vault for when I used to start uh, for when I debated it a little bit. You know, for you, for for, your, for you for for those that don't know, um, I used to be what they considered a performance debater, and um, I didn't give myself that name. They they gave me that name. You know what I'm saying? But uh, me and my debate partner Rasheed Campbell was known as performance debaters because we use a lot of poetry and rap and personal narratives to make debate arguments. So I'm gonna start this off with a little bit of J. Cole, you know, shout out to Jermaine. He started out by saying, <clears throat> paint a picture to show the deaf what it's like to listen. I speak these words to tell the blind man what he missing. To all my niggas doing time, man, up in prison, thought you had to resort to crime, man, forget the system. They raising babies up in Haiti, but there ain't no hope. Ain't no fathers, don't take no scholarship to slay no dope. Politicians holler by problems, but I ain't gonna vote. Keep talking about change and we floating in the same old boat. Hey, so tell me how I'm supposed to feel when the president spoke. When he ain't never had to struggle, ain't never been broke. Ain't even rolled through the gutter, ain't never been close. Trusting this government like trusting a devil with over rebel with pokes. I get up. Lifestyle of the young black and reckless. Her brothers are strapped and asking questions like, tell me why I ain't got this. See, we used to use rap and poetry to make arguments. And when it comes to debating the critique, we used to find that people used to be kind of lackluster on what they call critical and what it, being, and what it means to be critical. You can go to the uh, first slide. So I like to start off with like a little metaphor, you know, aside to the rap. Debate is really like shapes, you feel me? And, and, and debate attracts a lot of different shapes, you know? Uh, not every debate can fit into a square hole of policy debate. Not every debater can fit into the square hole of policy debate. Some people need round holes or obtuse holes or no hole at all. I think each debater brings their own style to debate. The question is, do they take up the method of a debate that allows them to access that style? I know when it comes to debate, we usually prioritize a lot of, a lot of things about logic, logos, or the rigorous nature of being able to understand something. And we usually devalue, you know, stylistic choices when it comes to this old debate space. And when it comes to this particular lecture about debate and decay, I want you to be thinking specifically about style. Next slide. See, we are all performance debaters. That's why I started off with the, with the caveat of that. That wasn't a name that I identified uh, myself with or my debater uh, or my debate partner did. It was something that the community kind of put on with us. You know what I'm saying? Because it's all a performance, right? You recognize that when policy debaters are doing a spread, they, they don't talk to nobody outside of debate that way. And which is one of the reasons of why I'm warranting my claim that we all are doing a performance. And I'm warranting it with the example that even policy traditional debaters don't kind of give information the same way they do when they get with those and hitting their timer. See, the best K debaters are the ones who understand how people misinterpret what the K debaters do and how most arguments made against critical positions only function around false stereotypes. And what we see in terms of being critical is what I want to make sure I recognize and I want to make sure I'm being very intentional when I say this, right? When y'all are reading your critical debate evidence, well, actually, I, actually, actually, when you're reading most of the evidence that you're reading debate, regardless of whether you want to be critical or not, those authors did not curate that evidence for you to get a ballot. You know what I'm saying? With that being said, there is a lot of reflexivity or a lot of similarities that happen in debate that also happen in the real world, quote unquote. And being misinterpreted when you're being critical is one of those consistencies, right? You can go to the next slide because I don't know if this I don't know if this video is gonna show or not. Didn't. So when thinking about critical debate. One of the first things that it's important to prioritize 
and thinking about, especially through a competitive sense, is, is debate a game or is it a training ground for accuracy? Or can it be both? Is debate a game? You know, there's a place where I find a lot of people decide they would rather be a K debater or than, than a policy debater. See, it's okay to be both, but there's only so many tournaments that you can prep for. Not everyone has those resources, and that's either a personal choice or one that is dictated by coaches. I know a lot of times for high school debaters, depending on what circuit that you're debating in or depending on what squad you're debating for, this might have a lot of the influence or, or yeah, pretty much a lot of the influence and sometimes determines what you're able to run and what you're not able to run. So, you know, uh, while I'm giving this, I'll try to keep that in mind, but I also just want to be clear in terms of giving you this information about debating the case. Next slide. So it's always important to, before you get into something, have a historical context. So debate, we know, depending on what historical, depending on what debate historian you're talking to, we know that sometimes that the, that the, it's, it's, it's a little muddy on what's going on, but we know that this right here is pretty much one of the consistencies. There are people who would argue racism as an impact, but many times because racism exists, it is hard to measure. Uh, the risk of a unique link to nuclear war outweigh incremental mitigations of racism. The same could be said for sexism or homophobia or when it comes to structural oppression, structural violence writ large. So what is a critique? It is criticizing the values, the ideas, the philosophy embodied within the basic support of the plan. So when you say United States federal government should, literally that mere statement kind of questioning the values, the ideas, the philosophy in terms of what gives legitimacy or credibility to debate in that way or even making that particular statement. This could be an examination of modes, methods, ontologies, ethics, discourses, or solutions. And don't worry for, uh, 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 I know for y'all in this varsity lab, y'all already kind of got a little bit of it. We're gonna go over it, uh, I'm saying again, and again, if y'all have any questions throughout any of this, feel free to ask, you know what I'm saying? You got jokes too, we all like to laugh, get those as well. Go to the next slide. So what is the critique? It has a German roots in philosophy. It, it literally means judgment or, or judgment or review. In debate and argument operating outside the framework of a normal comparative policy debate attacking usually implicit assumption of the opponent's analysis, according to Robert Sauter, is how we should understand critiques. And I think that I would agree with that. The uh, second, uh, I mean, uh, the, uh, the, the next one is that competitively in terms of really being able to be a hegemonic force within debate. We'll say that it emerged in the early 1990s, but according to what debate historian you're talking to, we can say that it started somewhere between the late 70s and early 80s when the stylistic choice and kind of content level of the critique started to emerge. And I can't see that last uh, bullet, uh, but yeah, you go to the next slide. So a lot of you might be asking yourself, why, why do the critique? You know, it seems like a whole bunch of hot theory mumbo jumbo. And um, when I have my judges, um, they're not gonna be able to understand what I'm doing. Um, the coaches on my teams don't even know what it is. Uh, what somebody say, uh, why is it spelled like that? Uh, critique spelled with a K. As a matter of fact, I have a slide for that right there. So Jalen, keep that in mind. Appreciate you passing that. But when we say why critique, this is the part right here where I kind of hope y'all will have questions when I read this, because I think that uh, through our labs, I can tell that this has been a lot of the, uh, I feel like under, un underbelly of what a lot of people have kind of concerns people bring up when they talk about the K. Uh, hold on, go back to the slide. I don't know what happened. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. The critique rejects many of the assumptions of traditional policy debate and posits that fiat is a meaningless construct. Affirmative plans are never really implemented and voting for a plan and gain, to gain an advantage is illogical. After all, why vote affirmative if nothing really changes? But implication, therefore the critique theory maintains that given that plans are never implemented, it is useless to discuss the benefits of what happens where the plan to be really implemented. Instead argue the advocates of the critique, the ideas and words 
and attitudes in the debate are far more real and more important in the lives of debaters and the judges. Critiques attacks the assumption of debate and or assumptions about what the debaters are debating about. When I was a debater, what I would like to, would, 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 especially when I first started debating the K, and especially if I had a judge that was kind of unfamiliar with my debating style, or I read they uh, a paradigm, and I could tell they had a, they already had a, a felt some type of way against the K. What I will always do is neutralize fiat and or turn fiat and talking about how at the end of this debate is at the end of this debate is only four. It's really four debaters and the judge. Congress ain't passing no plans. It's not going to make it to Capitol Hill. It's only important about what we produce in this room and the consequences of producing that literally in this room. You know what I'm saying? So literally being able to neutralize the step in the right direction and them being able to say try, die, and being able to say that uh, 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 solving, solving this nuclear war and everybody dying is more important than helping 20% of those people that deal with sexism, ableism, homophobia, patriarchy, whatever you want to deal with, whatever, whatever ism or whatever literature base you want to talk about in terms of social locations. Go to the next slide. So when and where is the critique? And as you see that we got this meme, you know, you know, say, oh, you didn't read a plan. This is policy debate. You can't sit with us. I don't know if y'all, you know what I'm saying, is old enough to, 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 to know the uh, Mean Girls references. But I feel like debate Mean Girls is always a cool thing. I let that go. <laughs> Every moment in debate is the critique, you know. Is before you walked into the room, is what they did in cross sex time, is the way in which they gave this speech in terms of tone, is when questioning the legitimacy or form of content of the argument, it's embedded in every topic and every resolution, whether it's domestic, whether it's international, you know, regardless of what the topic is, we can say that the critique or being able to critique is embedded in every single topic and resolution. And every in every in, 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 in the way that words and people interact is one of the ways that the critique interacts. And I think that when we think about how the critiques or how the hubris of thinking in terms of being able to critique something operates outside of debate, I think that when you think about different blog sites, whether we're talking about world star hip hop, but we're talking about shade room, I think that these are different ways that I feel like the critique can manifest itself in the outside world, you feel me? It's gonna be always trying to take a multiplicity of different perspectives and break down the meaning of how we should interpret what, you know what I'm saying, what's going down. You know, whether it's somebody trying to reach, uh, whether it's somebody throwing shade literally, whether it's somebody reading somebody they writes, whether it's somebody, oh, what's the tea on what's going on here? To me, those are all moments of when the critique or when the criticism of being critical operates outside of the debate. You can go to the next slide. So, um, what we know is that there are level to the K. Shout out to Meek Mills. You know, he says levels to this ish. You feel me? When it comes to the K, we also know it's levels to that ish, right? So we have an epistemic level, ontological level, ethical level. Um, with the uh, varsity lab, we already went over this, but epistemology, we know that that is like your knowledge production, where you get the knowledge from, how you, you know I'm saying, how you get your facts, how you know what you know. It's the theory of knowledge, especially in regard to its methods, validity, and scope. Epistemology is the investigation of what distinguishes justified beliefs from opinion. So like the idea that uh, Christopher Columbus sold the ocean blue in 1492, that is a particular epistemological stance to take on history. You know, uh, 1776, uh, America de uh, uh, declared independence, which established freedom for all Americans. You know, that comes from a particular epistemological stance. The next level we have is ontological or ontology, fancy word for just your origin of being. That is the philosophical study of nature, of being, becoming, existence, or reality, as well as the basic categories of being and their retaliations. Uh, I mean, I'm missing their retaliations and their relations. <laughs> uh, what we know in terms of debate, especially the current climate of debate, a lot of the ontological arguments that people usually hear are centered around anti-Blackness, the Middle Passage, and the positionality of Blackness and or the slave. Uh, when it comes to ontology, I think there's, uh, 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 what's important to know when it comes to debate is there's a lot of different textures of ontology. You know what I mean? And depending on what region you in and depending on what circuit you debating on you know there might be a different type of ontology you know what i'm saying it's like a social ontology they have social ontology they have 
the uh, more, uh, 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 I feel like, uh, traditional understandings of ontology that come from like enlightenment and modernity and stuff like that. And then you have like the uh, more uh, ontological understandings that deal with like race and, race and things being racialized and just being understanding that, you know, when it comes to ontology, that it's like, a, it's, it's, a, it's a whole field of literature that, you know what I'm saying, studies the origin of being, of becoming, of existence, of the things like that. And then the last one, I feel like it's more straightforward, more common sense, ethical, ethics that's relating to moral principle or a branch or uh, dealing 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 with these things like right wrong you know ethics morals uh all kind of tied in together in terms of debate and what we know in terms of decay is that when people run k's in debate they usually operate on one of these three levels now this is not an exhaustive list of the levels of decay however when it comes to typically you know the literature base that people are coming from it usually comes from one of these three Next, next debate, I mean, next slide. And with the levels of the K, of course, we got different types of K, you feel me? We have the K of case, we have the K of performance, and we have the K of debate. You know what I'm saying? The K of case can, uh, the, uh, the K of case is where a lot of these literature bases come from. We have capitalism, neoliberalism, queer theory, biocentrism, feminism, ableism, orientalism. Um, if you're not familiar with any of these terms right now, I encourage y'all to, uh, uh, to ask. I'm familiar with all, uh, with all, I don't know how many of these, I'm familiar with all of them. And of course, you know, if you uh, want to know kind of a little bit more in depth uh, analysis of what those things is, I'll uh, Google with your friend, definitely can Google that. Um, these are the ways that people are able to get links or kind of when my debate coach uh, used to teach me when I first got into debate because I walked on. So a lot of the fundamental things I learned, I kind of learned on the way. I think that the K of case, how I looked at it, or how I was taught to look at it, is like, that's your anchor in debate. That's like the most important thing that you say is, you know what I'm saying? That's like the most important thing or impact that you're saying that needs to, the, the judge needs to evaluate in the debate. You know, the next thing you have is your K of performance. You know, these are just, these are your language Ks, your uh, Ks of speed, your Ks of techne. Um, these are, uh, 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 there's multiple ways to be able to um, uh, kind of critique a performance. Um, you know, it can be a microaggression, an implicit bias, transphobic language, gender language, you, you name it. And the last thing we have is our K of debate. And I think that the K of debate and K of performance is kind of the same thing a bit. Um, you have your, your case that a resolution that like literally says the resolution is written this way and we can't do this, that, and the other. I think that's usually the more not strategic ways to write K-Avs or K-Ups and do things. Uh, queer theory is, uh, uh, shout out to you, uh, uh, Alexander uh, asks, what, what is queer theory? Uh, queer theory is the study that, uh, this is the kind of study of heteronormativity that studies the social location of, of kind of being queer or kind of, of non-normative understandings of sexuality. Um, these are, uh, uh, this is kind of where you have some of your academic understandings of the LGBT community or people that write about the LGBT community in, in, in academia comes, uh, usually do a lot under the, uh, the umbrella of queer theory and feminism. Um, queer theory is, uh, they, they talk a lot about things like, um, uh, uh, uh futurity and, uh, production, um, a lot about, uh, 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 just existence, you know, I think it's a lot of like the ontology stuff. Uh, Sydney, feel free to, you know what I'm saying, uh, th throw in there if you want to. Uh, settler colonialism, um, somebody asked what settler colonialism is, shout out to Adrian. Settler colonialism is a, uh, the study that is specifically about um, settler colonialism, because you know, it's different types of colonialism, you know what I'm saying? Like settler colonialism is the study of when the colonizer literally comes to settle and stay in the region or the area that they're colonizing and kind of the political, social, economic implications of settler colonialism and kind of how indigenous studies and or indigenous identities are positioned within um, America, within international relations. So it's a lot about um, reservations, a lot about the indigenous uh, identity, a lot about um, different um, uh, issues uh, that concerns, you know, indigeneity, indigenous uh, identities. Um, and of course, there are a lot of overlapping or intersectionality, shout out to Dr. Kimberly Crenshaw, that happens between a lot of different, uh, a lot of these different caves, right? So there is um, studies about 
ableist like uh, uh dis disability in feminism as one thing you know or capitalism feminism and, and ableism as one thing um yeah you can go to the next slide uh, I think uh, Sydney Sydney too provided me uh, 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 two quick little uh, ways to uh, answer what queer studies uh, is and what settler colonialism is. Uh, Sydney says that queer theory studies structure structures and social codes that dis, uh, that discriminate against non-normative genders and sexualities. Um, I forgot about that. It de definitely is gender and sexualities in queer study in queer theory studies is kind of where you can learn the distinction between sex and gender. Um, settler colonialism criticizes colonial, uh, uh, colonial colonization, where settlers take natives' land and also try to take on the uh, identity of natives. Um, there are four four key components to the K. Um, whether you're running it on the AF or the NED, what we know is that critiques challenge the philosophical underpinnings and assumptions of the AF. You know, we know that. This means that critiques always already have, I think, some philosophical independence um, that, that, that they're trying to expose and or bring to light. Um, we know that every K has a framework or analysis of what some people will call the theory of power. Um, whether we're talking about capitalism, socialism, anti-blackness, uh, uh, ableism, um, queer theory, all of these have a framework or analysis or a theory of power. And this is what most all, or really not most, well, all K components must have in terms of being something that's competitive. Then you have your links, you have your impact, and you have your alternative. If you're running a K AF, that alternative would be your advocacy statement or your plan or your uh, 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 project or what you're trying to get affirmed, you feel me? Uh, next next uh, slide. And just giving just giving context, because you saw they say context is key. When terms of what those four things, framework of analysis, links, impacts, and alternative is, when we so when I say framework or analysis, or I say uh, theory of power, that's how should one view the role of the critique against the arguments in the policy debate. Or how do you want the judge to evaluate to evaluate or prioritize that theory of power or that framework or analysis in the debate? Um, the link is what are the accusations or what does the particular critique have to do with the opposing team's advocacy? A lot of times when people run, or a lot of times when people think about the more shallow stereotypes of the K, they think that K teams usually have links of omission. Well, they think that the only time people can run the case to say that, oh, you didn't do this, or you didn't mention this, or, oh, you didn't mention this, or what about this? So it's like, the what about isms? But a lot of times, how you able to, I think, catch people slipping, or, you know what I'm saying, catch people lacking on their Mac, and when I think in terms to expecting what they should be expecting with the K, is being able to have you a nice, specific link. You know what I'm saying? Um, the next thing is impacts, you feel me? This is, what does the critique justify voting against the opposing team? You feel me? Why does it matter? Why do we care? What are the bad things that occur through the opposing team's advocacy or through their plan or through their permutation or through the way they looked at you or through the way they asked that question in cross six or through the way they outlined their evidence? You know what I'm saying? These are all the ways in which you should be thinking about why do we care about anything that you said on the impact level, all right? See, a lot of times when you're debating people, it's easy to say they wrong or they dropped this or this means I'm right. But usually as a judge, and I know as a debater, what separates the real from the fake, you feel me, or the good from the magnificent is being able to go to that second level, the third level of argumentation to attach an impact. You feel me? Like, why do we care? You know what I'm saying? When I'm sitting at the back of a room and I'm judging around and the debaters say, they dropped this, this means they're wrong. It's like, word okay why does that matter you know what i'm saying that's the impact level you know what i mean if you don't take nothing from this critique debate i mean this critique lecture you feel me you need to have an impact always already always already be thinking about the impact and then the last thing is the alternative you feel me or the solvency or the plan or the the the, the mission statement you feel me what should be done instead of the affirmative? Or what should be done instead of the status quo? What should be done instead of what's going on right now? 
You know what I mean? And this is in relation to the critique, of course. You know, what is the best correlation action to avoid those impacts that you just said, that you just told us about, that you just gave us, that the other team bring about, or that if we keep on doing it the way they're doing it in the status quo, it's going to come about. You can go to the next slide. How to answer a critique. You know, I know everybody might not be interested in running a critique, you feel me? Some people might be watching this to, to, to get a little bit more information about how critiques run and maybe to answer the critique. This is the part right here where we talk about how to answer the critique. You got a specific uh, little um, acronym right here, F postal. Framework, permutations, offense, obviously deficient theory, alt defense, and link defense. Framework is a simple policy education First key, you feel me? I think that anytime you are answering a K, whether you're on the F or whether you're on the NEG, you should always be thinking about that top level meta analysis in terms of what I, how I was taught to debate above the flow is you gotta have that simple framework that we need to be thinking about pragmatic approaches and thinking about how we learn about the, how the policymaking process operate and learning the language of the policymakers and how even if you think the government is sexist, racist, homophobic, and ableist, the only way we're going to be able to do something about it is having some policy education. And you know what I'm saying? You, you need that. You feel me? Like you need that. As a matter of fact, as somebody that always debated against, you know what I'm saying, framework and F postal, um, I know that the best people, the best, the, 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 the people that I had the best times in terms of dealing with the competition while I might lose is the people that had their framework right and tight and they matched it. You know what I'm saying? The next thing you need the permutation. Let's see. Does framework apply to all case or just case case? Nah, framework apply to all case. You feel me? Or in my opinion, I think that I think that it's gonna go down to different people's perspectives and different coaching styles. But you know what I'm saying? As a coach that happened to, you know what I mean, uh, 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 have some debaters that won a national championship and happened to be a debater that almost won a national championship, I would say that framework applies to all the Ks. I think that if that K can be something that the judge can prefer and put their battle up to, you better prefer or you better put some framework on it. You know what I'm saying? If this team that ran the cap K against you and you talking about how, you know, uh, stopping, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, automatic immunity or uh, 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 stopping immunity for the police is going to help, we need to be talking about how we need to prefer uh, pragmatic policy simulations or pragmatic policy options and alternatives over anything and everything and whatever that K team talking about in terms of the thought process they want to do or the reorientation they want to do, we ain't going for it. You know what I'm saying? Debate is for us to be learning about the language of the policymakers and then for us to be able to learn how the the, the, the law works. You know what I'm saying? If they want to uh, play uh, uh, power theory games, they can go to the library and they can start a book club. You know what I'm saying? If I was a policy debater, that's what I'd tell a K person. You, feel me? you might want to write that down. You know what I'm saying? They see that raffle dials on the net. You know, see also when you're debating the K, you got to understand how to have ethos and personality. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times you're going to be talking like some high theory stuff. And a lot of, to me, I think that what some of the sorry K debaters do is they're usually able to talk about some high theory stuff, but they fail at being able to make it real. They fail at being able to contextualize it to some material, you know what I'm saying? You know, what I'm, you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about, whatever. Uh, 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 next, we got offense. He said, this framework, oh yeah, I already answered that. Uh, the next we have is offense. This is where you need your link, your impact terms. You know what I'm saying? What really matters? Oh, I keep on hearing my wife. That's what keep on, keep on throwing me off. My wife, I ain't, I ain't supposed to be hearing my wife right now. She's supposed to be in the room. You know what I'm saying? That's another subject right there. Cause you know, shout out to everybody with the coronavirus. But it's another subject. Next, you need a solvency, a solvency deficit. You know what I'm saying? Your movement fails. The government infiltrates it. The uh, government is inevitable. You see the political, uh, you know, you need to be able to say whatever they're trying to do fails. The next thing you need to do is the T. This is the theory. This is the uh, vague, alts, bad, various violations. Uh, remember how I started off this uh, presentation and talking about um, how the K is always interrogating the notion of fiat. So you need some various, you need various violations of why fiat is good or some, and some net benefits of why we should prefer fiat in terms of debate. Next, you need some all defense. This is why 
uh, specifically why, you know, movements are grassroots or discourse fails or why they're infiltrated or why they, you know what I'm saying, miss the mark and then you need some link defense. Or why you might link, but you might not link as hard as they say, you know what I'm saying? Or you might, or even though you might link, it might not be as bad as they think it is, you know what I'm saying? Go to the next slide. Oh, uh, yeah, the, yeah. And then, and then, and then, shout out to uh, Sydney and everybody that's uh, been trained debate through the uh, traditional lens uh, uh, textbook definition for solvency deficit equals the alternative fails to solve the AF. You know, the alt does not solve the AF. You know, or the uh, K does not solve the, the 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 harms or the impacts or something like that. You know. Um, I like to just keep this one right here smooth. Um, I ain't gonna go through all the perms. What's important about me putting this on here in terms of when you people debate uh, the case, when they have KFs, is they always try to uh, throw a perm party, you know? And just as a judge, you feel me? I wanna let everybody know that's just listening to this, whether you listen to it live or you listen to it after the fact, do not throw a permutation party. You feel me? No judge likes perm parties. If you give us invitation to multiple perm parties, we probably gonna decline all of the invitations. If you are asking yourself, uh, George, what is a permutation party? That is when you say, perm do both, perm do the all, then they have perm do the plan, then all the perm do that. And you, don't, you know what I'm saying? You just say a whole bunch of permutations. You don't give me no net benefits. You don't give me how the perm operates. You don't give me how the perm functions. You don't give me, you know what I'm saying? You don't give me no warrants to the perm. You just slow out perm as much as you can and think that if you say perm as much as you can, it'll be that many permutation arguments on the flow. And that's just not how the debate works. You feel me? You know, uh, it's not how it works. Don't, don't, don't do it. You know what I'm saying? To me at best, pick you two permutations to defend and really give me some articulations and explain how these perms function. Give me some examples of these perms and how they would look in the real world. You know what I'm saying? Go to the next slide. Framework. You know, I think that beside of thinking about like F postal in terms of framework and um, uh, uh, like having a framework argument against debate and besides kind of having a framework of analysis or a theory of power, when you're running a KF or when you're running a case period, you need to be thinking about the normative understandings of framework and debate. You know what I'm saying? And, and how the argument of debate, how the argument framework has or is something that you always have to be mindful of or conscious of when you're trying to deploy the K. This argument has become quite common in many debates. It is just really a big old impact debate. You know what I mean? It, to, to, be, to, 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 to go a step further, the only reason why we have debate is for education. The only reason why we debate is for education. The only reason why debate is funded, the only reason why people are given jobs to do debate is for education. Debate is an activity to increase your uh, academic experience at your respective schools. Framework, the argument of framework in the big picture is merely just an argument that says what type of education that we should be learning. From a normative standpoint, framework says that we only should be thinking about debate in terms of policy making, in terms of policy makers, in terms of the policy making process. We always should be thinking about the state as an actor, the state as an agent, and we should always be thinking about different policy alternatives, different policy options. In the name of education. 